Welcome to The Race on Scripps News. I'm Chance Seals in Washington. Thanks for being with us tonight. After two major rulings in Florida and Arizona, the issue of abortion is now front and center in presidential politics right now. Top Republicans from across the country trying to maybe tamp down discussions of a national ban. Add to the mix, former President Donald Trump, the GOP's de facto leader, doubled down on his view that states, not the feds, should decide abortion policy. Will that work? What would that look like? States like Arizona banning almost all abortions at this point. He says that really is too far. So what is the Republican position going forward? What's viable? Scripps News political analyst Steve Schmidt with us tonight. In person, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, founder of the Warning Newsletter and Podcast. Steve, I wanted to start with, I mean, this has been a perennial and, and potent issue. Uh, Republicans really felt this was a strong issue with them. I, I went back to the 2008 campaign. You ran for John McCain. And here was the Pew summary of McCain's stance. McCain supports overturning Roe v. Wade, banning abortion, except in cases of rape, incest, or threat to the life of the mother. I mean, pro-life groups thought we got what we wanted. Now, Republicans are freaking out that they got what they wanted. What should the position be for Republicans? Well, Donald Trump got exactly what he wanted, and this version of the Republican Party achieved its goal, its stated position over 50 years. So mm -hmm. there's no position to escape from. This is a position, a place that they have achieved. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, is nobody ever thought that Supreme Court justices would overturn Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. Every Supreme Court justice, including the two, Alito and, and Thomas, uh, uh, before Trump, uh, who voted to overturn this during their confirmation hearings, make a pledge that they believe in a principle called stare decisis, which is a respect for precedent. Mm -hmm. uh, the precedent was overturned, and we have what we have. Um, but the but but there is no there is no blurry line here. Uh, the fact of the matter is is you have one political party uh, that believes that this decision is a political decision. People that will make this decision for America's women are state legislative bodies or the Congress. Uh, the idea of the role of government in the mm -hmm. lives of this nation of 320 million people is fundamentally on the line. Do you want Lindsey Graham in the confession booth with you? Do you want him in the delivery room with you? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want him in the, in the, in the lawyer's office with you? Uh, and and so, so this intrusion uh -huh. uh, that, that we're seeing is going to be this huge issue in the November well, election. Why did, I mean, you served at the uppermost rungs of this party. Why did Republicans say this for 50 years if they didn't really want it or believe it? Well, the Republican Party uh, was the pro-life party in the country, but it had always accommodated pro-choice politicians, Christy Whitman, Tom Ridge, mm -hmm. uh, Rudy Giuliani back in the day, George Pataki from, from New York. And all of them said, George Bush said, I don't ask my justices right for political positions i don't ask them right to take a litmus test donald trump ex explicitly said that he would and he did and those judges all promised to repeal roe v wade all of the other judges really? before that no wait you're saying they went into all, the oval office all, and of, promised all of those all of those trump nominated judges were pretty expressive about their commitments right, okay. to repeal Roe v. Wade in a way that other judges historically had not been. What they all signaled was a respect for precedent. The overturning of Roe v. Wade was a radical decision because there's never been a Supreme Court precedent where rights granted by a court have been overturned by the same court. And that's what happened in Roe v. Wade. And now this is a political disaster for the Republican Party who has achieved fundamental restrictions mm -hmm. towards women's rights over their bodies, over their health care. We have seen how it's turned out in every state it's been on the ballot. Um, you know, right. it seems to have driven more people out and it's gone the way of uh, abortion rights advocates. Is it a certainty politically that Democrats have a lock on this issue? Because if you look at the bills that Democrats have proposed in Congress, it's that up until birth, um, you know, you can perform an abortion for the health of the mother, which doesn't say the physical health. The, the interpretation is it might even be mental health, which if you look at the polls is too far for most Americans as well. So do Democrats have a lock on it? This is a more complicated issue politically than most Democratic strategists mm -hmm. give it credit for. 
because Democrats have allowed themselves to be boxed into a position over a medical procedure that does not happen in America. There are no late-term elective abortions. Women don't go to an abortion clinic in America in their ninth term, in their ninth month of pregnancy, in that third trimester, and say, I want an elective abortion. The Republicans effectively have made it seem to Americans that something that is morally anathematic as that happens every day, and it does not. The political failure of Democrats to deal with that has complicated this issue because you have scores of Democrats that answer a hypothetical question. Would you support abortion up to the moment of birth? That position is a radical position. It's not mm -hmm. supported by the American people, but it doesn't happen. But it has complicated it this issue. Yeah. It, do it doesn't happen ever. There are abortions that take place in the ninth month yeah. for medical reasons. There are no elective abortions that take place in America. There just simply aren't where someone walks in and says, I changed my mind in the ninth month. Okay. This is a propaganda talking point of, of, of Republicans that's been effective, and it complicates the issue politically. I got to ask you about Ron Klain, because mm -hmm. he got caught. It's sure. not a hot mic. He knew he was speaking before everybody. He is very close to President Biden. He was his chief of staff in the White House, you know. And, and he was asked last night, do you think he should be talking more about the bipartisan infrastructure bill? And he said, essentially, no, I don't. And this is what he said right here. This is a, um, a, a quote. I'm not going to say all of it, especially the, the word that begins with F. But you can see he emphatically feels like stop talking about bridges, start talking about groceries, start talking about houses. What do you make of that? Well, it's great advice and it ought to be heeded by the White House. Couple, couple of things. When you read all of the quotes by folks from the White House talking about when people find out the things that we have done, they will change their position or opinion about the president. Enthusiasm will grow. Here's the deal. If you walk around in the American West where I live, you mm -hmm. can hike on trails that were made by Franklin Roosevelt Civilian Conservation Corps. And you sit there almost 100 years later, you say, wow, what an achievement. The great lodges in the national parks, the bridges, the roads, people will enjoy them one day. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden will have the credit that Eisenhower does as a great infrastructure mm -hmm. president but no one will care for 30 years. The reality is, is doing what you said you would do when you ran for office. Mm -hmm. The reward for that is not a second term. It's the airplane, it's the Marine Band, it's hail to the chief, it's the White House and all the stuff the American people give you uh -huh. to be president for a term. And then you have to explain to them what it is that you want to do for the next four years not what you did for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And presidents who don't understand that an election is a choice, not a referendum, wind up in the position that George Herbert Walker Bush did, which is the same position Winston Churchill found himself in after winning World War II for the British, mm -hmm. voted out of office, mission accomplished. This is a brutal business, so, eyes, right? Eyes forward. forward, what's next? Do you think, really quick, do you think Biden will listen? He should listen okay. because Ron Klain is someone who has his best interests at heart, and he's a good, good political strategist. Steve Schmidt, so glad to meet you in person finally. My pleasure. Founder of The Warning. Uh, we listen, we read. We appreciate you being here. You bet. All right. We have a lot more.